show. Last week, I told you guys about Jennifer Nguyen. And actually, it's just Gwen. Jennifer Gwen um, from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I don't really know. I mean, not really. I don't know them people at all. But um, I know the show, of course. And um, remember I told you she had put all that shit up, racist shit, um, um, talking about support pretty much of police brutality and all of that. Well, it seems that Bravo has its ears to the street. And, um, you know, today in this day and age, there is no space for people to be racist, okay? We just, people just ain't taking it. Folks ain't taking it these days. And if you are attached to somebody that's racist, then that's going to be problems for you as well. And I'm sure Bravo knows that. So uh, Bravo went on ahead and gave her the ax, okay? From what I understand, you guys tell me that she just got on the show this season, just started on the show in September, and here it is January, baby girl done got the boot, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't feel sorry for her. Okay. Now, after she um got fired, she went on she went on to Instagram live uh with her special black friend Michael. Okay, because I mean, how else do we prove that we're not racist if we bring our black friends on? Okay. And I was looking at Mr. uh Michael over there and I was just like, how you just how do you just do stuff like this? You know? And I got to remember it's Utah, child. <laughs> child, she got on there and she went on in her head and said that, you know, her words were, um, you know, she realized that the words and the memes and things that she put up was offensive and, you know, unacceptable. And uh, she takes responsibility for it, even though, you know, it could have been her or her team. She kind of tried to make it seem like she had a team, I'm not really sure what she does in her regular real life. I mean, you have a team that's tweeting for you. It wasn't like you was on the show yet, you know, but maybe she had other things going. So I, I won't doubt her on that. But yeah, she tried to say that her team was the one. I was like, bitch, now you know, good damn well, wasn't no team that did that. You did that because that's how you felt. Okay. She said that she felt that way at the time. It was a long time ago. I was at 2020, you guys. 2020 was not a long time ago. This is the beginning of 2022. And that was the summer of 2020. It hasn't even been two years. Okay. So I'm not saying that people can't change their mind in a year and a half, but come on now, girl, you could have came up with something better than that, you know? So she says that she takes full responsibility and she understands and everything, but she wants people to realize that she is a Republican and that she does support the law enforcement. Um, and that that doesn't mean that she's a racist. And I said, that's true. It doesn't mean that you're a racist just because you're a Republican and you support law enforcement. But the bullshit that you posted, that made you look very much like a racist, okay? And that you support police brutality and specifically towards black people, okay? So let's not confuse the two. Nobody said that just because you're Republican and that you support law enforcement, that you support also police brutality. There's police out there that's doing their job correctly, you know? So, you know, she can miss us with that, okay? And while I was sitting there watching her and Mr. Tom up there talking, I was just like, girl, please. So um, she can take her Republican law enforcement supporting self on somewhere. Like many people say, grand opening and grand closing. Okay, four months, girl. You couldn't make it before four months. I'm not sorry, child. Moving on along. <music> So next story, remember I told you that I would talk about the Janet Jackson documentary and the Janet Jackson documentary will be airing tonight, which is Friday and um, tomorrow night, which is Saturday on Lifetime. OK, and um, everyone is excited about this documentary because this is Janet Jackson who is responsible for giving us the words. This is not a, um, you know, a sources type of documentary where all the people around her talk. This is actually supposed to be coming from the horse's mouth. Um, of Janet Jackson. And we know historically Janet Jackson has been very tight-lipped. She doesn't really talk much, definitely doesn't talk about her life, her family, things like that. Um, up until now, the Janet Jack I mean, the Jackson family has been able to keep, you know, the things that happen within their family very co close to Vess. And I don't know if I expect her to just be in there spilling all kind of beans about her family. She does still doesn't strike me as the type to do that. I'm just hoping that this documentary is handled 
um, you know, correctly. I mean, I feel like it will be since Janet Jackson is definitely a part of it, um, that she approved it, you know, that she's in this. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I don't know what you guys want me to talk about. I mean, of course, the trailer talks about, I mean, it's all the headline grabbing things that, you know, talked about the Super Bowl. Justin Timberlake is going to be in this documentary, by the way. Um, talks about, um, you know, her saying that she would never hide a baby from James DeBarge, you know. Talks about how her and Michael, you know, Michael used to call her a fat cow and a slut and a pig and you know that they would laugh about it but it hurt her inside and I was like you know that see those are the kind of things that I feel like are kind of taken out of context um because you know when you have siblings and you are young and you guys say things about each other and all of that you know it's just sort of like a sibling kind of like a jabs that you know brothers and sisters do with each other you know I would hope and I don't think that he would mean it in that way. You know, they're joking around. He's saying things, she's saying things or like that. But see, when you see something in the context like that, now everybody latches onto it. And all of a sudden, you know, Michael Jackson's this horrible person because he called her a pig and a cow and all of that. And just what I'm saying is not saying that she was wrong for feeling a certain kind of way about the things that he was saying. But what is the, you know, it's like, were you guys kids? Are you so these are kind of things that we'll talk about. They'll talk about in the documentary. Of course, we're watching just the trailer. So these are things that, yeah, you know, the media latches on to. The big stories that have been a part of Janet Jackson's past that, you know, has always been kind of hush-hush. Um, so I was disappointed in that headline, you know. I, I, I didn't like that, but hopefully it gets explained because, you know... I thought that Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson had a very good relationship as a brother and sister, you know. So we'll we'll find out more in the documentary. It comes on tonight and tomorrow, like I said. It's two hours tonight, two hours tomorrow night. Will you be watching? I know you will, because y'all keep asking me about it. Hi, <laughs> right, so your girl Kelly Price. Now, you guys know Kelly Price is special, okay? Kelly Price definitely strikes me as the type that's going to have her Vaseline and her Timbaland boots ready, <laughs> okay? This girl's whole disposition just strikes me as a person that um, not only is she going to talk the talk, but she will walk the walk if she has to, <laughs> all right? So um, just keeping that in mind, Kelly Price was on Vlad TV. And uh, she was being interviewed. I guess she's feeling better. You guys know that earlier, uh, or l last year, I should say, um, remember she was sick with COVID and remember all of the that whole drama and spectacle surrounding her family and her, them not knowing where she is and her supposedly sneaking off and getting married and the kids didn't know and they don't like the guy. And Okay, so you guys remember all that stuff, right? Okay, so she was on Vlad TV, feeling better. And, um, you know, it's an interview. So they're asking her different questions. Of course, the R. Kelly situation came up, um, which it looks like she was expecting. I mean, she did work with R. Kelly extensively in the past, okay? And Kelly Price goes on to say in her interview that um, her and R. Kelly kind of had like a big brother. Um, she was more like a big sister to R. Kelly, even though he was older than her. You know, that was the role that she took. Um, that she did travel with him in the music industry, writing for him, um, and that they kept it very um, professional. She so said that there were rumors that she would hear um, that he had a special proclivity to young, underage girls, but he never, you know, he never brought that around her. And I guess Kelly is a part of the, as long as I don't see it, then I'm not going to um, have a problem. But if you bring it around me, then of course, I'm not going to be working with you any longer. Okay. And uh, whether or not that's the right or wrong way to handle it, that's how she handled it back in the day. She said that, um, and she was close to the family. She said that she was close to Drea. And, you know, when Drea had her kids, she would fly up and help her out. And, you know, so they were like that kind of, they were family. And it seems that R. Kelly would separate um, and compartmentalize like his scandalous and the bullshit that he was doing from like, 
if he respected you and just knew that you was not on that type of time, then he kept those kind of worlds kind of separate from each other. I mean, that's just kind of how it sounded, you know, when Kelly Price was talking, but she went on to say how. music industry and nobody wants to talk about this everybody has pinned r kelly to the wall but nobody wants to talk about how in the music industry in general this happens that young um, girls are presented to these um, male superstars um, by the mothers many times that the mothers will show up and try to get backstage and they'll be dressed like the daughter and they'll be working really hard and you know sending their kids off to you know with this man who might possibly already have a reputation. She said it happens all the time. And of course we believe that. I totally believe that. We've heard many, many stories and not just R. Kelly, um, but of women who wanted their daughter, you know, to meet a certain celebrity. Remember the whole mix up or the mess with Kim Zosiak talking about whose dick needs to be sucked for her daughter to meet John Legend or go backstage. You know, remember, I mean, I don't know if she was joking or not, but that kind of talk, you know, it has been a part of it for years and years and years and years and years. Didn't start with R. Kelly. Didn't end with R. Kelly, I'm sure. You know, and Kelly was like, nobody wants to talk about that. So after she had did her interview, of course, the blip about R. Kelly is the one that made the social media circuit and went viral. And evidently, Joy Jellin, is that how you say her name? That is Jocelyn Savage's mother. Um, she took offense to this and she had a lot to say. And she even threatened Kelly Price and told her to tread lightly as if she had information on the stuff that Kelly Price had done and that if Kelly Price didn't back off this whole thing about uh, Joy Jellin bringing Joc Joycelyn back for R. Kelly. Now, you guys know Joycelyn Savage is R. Kelly's girlfriend. Evidently, they're still together. Okay, even with him being in jail, under the jail, and not getting out of jail, um, Joycelyn from from what it seems like anyway, is still very loyal to R. Kelly. So the mother anyway was pissed that Kelly Price had said this. Now, like I said, Kelly Price, you know, Vaseline and Timbaland ready, um, came back, doubled down on social media and said, I said what I said. Like, first of all, I did not even say your name when I said that. I said mothers and daughters. Now, you know, even if I didn't say your name, obviously it hit dog hollers. Because you take an offense to something that, you know, I generalized and I'm sure she generalized it on purpose. But yeah, she was basically like, listen, I said that it happens as a culture in the music industry. Did not say that Joy Jellin brought Joyce Lynn back for R. Kelly, served her up on a platter, even though that is part of the story that we have heard. Kelly Price didn't say that. OK, um, and um, I, I just feel like just the way that her nostrils was kind of flared and the way she was looking in the, <laughs> in the camera, that was a, um unspoken bitch. Try me if you want to. I think Joy Jellin is going to let it go because maybe that's a can of worms that you just don't want to open up. And like I said, Kelly Price is waiting to beat the brakes off of any savage that might come her way. So tread lightly. <laughs> <laughs> Tread lightly. Long term COVID or not, we know that girl is not the one to play with. You guys, so next story up Adele. Adele made the announcement on January 20th, um, a day before her residency was supposed to start at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, she made the announcement. Um, that she was not going to be able to present her um, concert to the many, many people who had already bought their tickets and traveled to Las Vegas ready for um, the concert, okay? She was in tears when she did the uh, video, but she said that um, she has been, her, her, her crew pretty much has been broken down with COVID. Either they have COVID or they've been exposed to COVID. 
you know, and that people are off part of her crew, like, and this is her stage crew and all of that. So she hasn't even been able to put this, this uh, thing together because they've had setbacks after setbacks. She said that she's not going to be able to bring back, you know, forth a concert that she really would like to bring forth. And, um, she didn't even really say if she was going to be doing it in the future. I know I was watching Entertainment Tonight the other night and they were actually showing that they were removing parts of the stage from Caesar's Palace, you know? So it looks like they have no plans of doing anything, at least no time in the near future. So, um, you know, everybody is just sort of like, what is going on? Well, <clears throat> It, it seems like, and I could be wrong, I'm not no big Adele fan. Like, I, I don't see the hype. I know everybody loves Adele. I like her as a person, but as far as her music is concerned, there's just never been an Adele. Just never have been. Okay. But I do realize that Adele is always long awaited. You know, like this last album that she had, you know, that now reflects where she is in her life after her divorce and now her new relationship and how happy she is, but the things that she went through and, you know, she's talking about all of that. <clears throat> After her concert, that night with Adele that um, came on right before Christmas time um, on regular national TV, um, after that was a huge hit, it seems like that was when they put into place that they were going to get, now I may be wrong, but it seems like that was around the time when they really was like, okay, we're going to get Adele and she's going to come and do a stage show and a residency. Because I don't really remember talking about her having a residency. You know, we've been talking about over the over last year who all had a residency coming up. And I didn't remember talking about Adele. But I may be wrong on that. And you guys can correct me. But it seems like after that happened and the success of that special then they were like, we're going to have this residency, okay? And that's really just a month, two months later. Now, all of a sudden, you're supposed to put on this big production. Now, you're supposed to put on this big production. And, you know, it takes time. The logistics have to be together. And, of course, when you're fighting in this pandemic and people getting sick, like, all of that can hinder the stage production of a show. You know, I went to Vegas in May, and I saw that Katy Perry, they were talking, they were advertising for Katy Perry, who was going to be starting at the end of the year, her residency at a Hilton resort there. And that was six, seven, eight, nine months ahead of, you know, when she was expected to be there. Um, and then we have Adele, who I guess they were trying to put this show together in two months. And that's just what it looks like to me. Um, and it was impossible to do. So they said, you know, of course, there's always the rumors that's going around. You can take it with a grain of salt, though. You know, people are trying to say that she was having problems with Rich Paul, which is the um, sports agent that she is dating. And, um, you know, they said that she was on the phone with him and that she was crying and, you know, she was yelling. And I was like, OK, I mean, that doesn't mean that she was having an argument with him. I mean, she could have been crying to him. You know, when you're frustrated about a show that is so much pressure on you to do and do correctly, of course, you're going to cry and talk to your partner um, because that is a, a source of your support. So it doesn't necessarily mean that her and him were fighting. It's just that she has all this tremendous pressure on her to put out the show that she knows has to be up to a certain caliber. And as of now, it's not looking like it's happening, you know, so... Like I said, we kind of take that with the grain of salt. Um, they seem to still be together. And so that's just kind of what that is there. But um, yeah, you guys, they, 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 they saying that they don't believe that she has any plans of doing this anytime soon. Like I said, taking apart the stage and all of the props and everything and all of that has been moved out. So we'll see who sees the palace gets next. Okay, where is New Edition gonna be when they go out there? for um, their residency. I'm looking forward to that because we're going to get a girl's trip. Ain't that right? Deborah and Crystal and Roshan and you know, maybe Val and maybe Menina. And, you know, we're going to see if we can get all the girls out there so we can have a good time and go check out our boys. But in the meantime, were you guys expected to go see Adele out there in Las Vegas? Because if you were, you won't be seeing her now. <music> guys next story so this is a quick story because 
uh, Mike Hill evidently was in an interview, Mike Hill being um, hashtag chill, um, Cynthia Bailey's husband, you guys, that Mike Hill, he was in an interview and he was just talking about, amongst other things, I guess the difficulties of being married and trying to combine your life with the person that you, um, you know, you're trying to live with forever and ever, okay? And yes, it is an adjustment. And yes, there's some good days and some bad days. So, you know, he was saying in the interview that, you know, basically that's it. It's good days and bad days, you know, as like Sunday, you know, everything was great. And he said, then on Monday, he was just like, boy, this might not last, might not even make it to two years. He said it in jest, you guys. He was saying facetiously. I don't think that he was actually saying that him and Cynthia were going to break up before they can even make it to two years. Now, with all that being said, you know, two years, a year and a half, I mean, that's kind of like <laughs> fighting like that. I mean, y'all should still kind of be in the honeymoon stage, you know, and you fighting, fighting like that and say that you might not even make it. I mean, eh, probably not the best way to talk about your new marriage to this girl, okay? But I don't really think that he meant it that way, saying that they're not gonna make it, you know? It's just some days it, sh it should be like that. And then lastly, since we're talking about Cynthia Bailey Child, remember I told you guys last week that um, the new um, Celebrity Big Brother cast had been announced and we had Lamar Odom and we had NeNe Leakes and we had New York. Okay, we had um, um, Tadra Call. We had uh, a few other people. But those were the names that I can remember off the top of my head. And I was actually kind of looking forward to it, you know. Tiffany is reality show gold, okay, New York. I love New York. She is she is reality show gold. So whenever she is on something, it always promises to be entertaining, okay? Then, of course, we can see NeNe. And I was looking forward to kind of seeing NeNe in that capacity. You guys had even asked me what I review it, and I actually was thinking about it, okay? And that's how serious it had gotten. Well, turns out that right after I put Top of the Blogs up last week, um, we found out that Tiffany... I love New York. New York does not want to get the vaccination, okay? And that, of course, is part of the protocol. You want to be on the show, you're going to be living in this house with these people locked up, you have to have had the vaccination. She didn't want to do it, so that took her out, okay? I don't know exactly what happened with NeNe Leak. Some people said it was a rumor. Somebody told me that she was asked a long time ago to do it before she started all these antics on social media with her new um, African um, um, king that she is dating. I, I don't know what happened. Okay. But now they turn around and tell us that, yeah, them people that they said before, they ain't going to be on the show. Okay. Let me tell you who the new lineup is. Well, I mean, it's sort of new, sort of. So we still have Todra Call. Okay. We still have Lamar Odom. All right. But, uh, we got Cynthia Bailey and we got Todd Bridges. I was just like, I have never not cared about somebody as much as I don't care about those people. <laughs> Why do I have to see Todd Bridges of all people? Where did they dig Todd Bridges? I mean, listen, I got respect for Todd Bridges and all, but I really don't care about Todd Bridges. I don't really care about none of those people. I do not care. Like, I was just like, okay, this completely, I ain't reviewing that, you know, because... I just, mm -mm. I was like, Cynthia Bailey, she seems so boring. Like, what would she be on a show like that? I just can't even imagine. I don't really know much about Todd Hall. I know that he has his controversies and all, you know, so he might be able to bring some spitfire to the show. And I know Todd Bridges, you know, quiet as it's kept. Um, he got a little special in him as well, okay? Um, we haven't seen him in so long that people probably forgot, but I, I do know that, Todd can be spicy, <laughs> okay? So he ain't gonna be letting them folks get away with stuff, but he still, it's just sort of like, I mean, you couldn't at least have gotten NeNe. Even if New York wasn't gonna be in there, NeNe might've been a draw, but Cynthia? 
And then did you see the, the, the commercials that they have? Hi, hi, my name is Cynthia Bailey. Uh, and you guys might know me from Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> she looked nervous. And I was just like, and nobody, you know, Lamar Odom, like, oh God, I just know. Just know. I mean, it'll be a good opportunity for them, you know, for them, especially the ones that aren't as exposed to like, like Todrick Hall, this will be good for him. This will be something because we know him from, I feel like he's known very well in social media, but you know, now we're on a national platform. So he, you know, this will help him. Well, we already know Lamar, Cynthia and Todd, and it's just sort of like, ugh. So yeah, I won't be reviewing that. You guys don't even have to worry about that one yet. Rocky will not be doing that, but will you be watching? that is it so thanks for all the well wishes my mouth is doing much better i had an infection a bacteria i should say that was underneath my gums i talked about it on instagram on my stories so you guys can go over there and watch it and it'll be gone at some point today so you want to know i don't feel like talking about it here all i know all i can tell you is i've had a toothache all week and uh, it got really bad and i had to go to the dentist and you know get the medication and i gotta get this tooth pulled so it is what it is, you guys. That's why it kind of maybe it feels like the energy might be down a little bit. Plus, I've had some stuff personally go on this week. I'm just like, oh, I'm just drained. Looking forward for the weekend, you guys. So that is it. Okay, I'm going to get off of here. We do this every single week. So make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you come back. Mm -hmm.